muy orgulloso de lo que él llama los tornillos, que está a punto de traerles la cigüeña, miren. To begin with, you know that you have to create a setting in at least four parts, because the tune is in four parts. You also know you'll be arranging part B only once, but you'll be arranging part A three times, maybe three different ways, if that's how you hear it. But which arranging device should you use for which part? You'll get help on that decision from the texture of the tune, the rhythmic structure. You know where the melody is busy, and you know where it's sparse and slow moving. Well, there's no percentage in having your arrangement fight with the tune, at least not the first time around. But part A repeats now, and this second time around, you might want to be a bit more relaxed with an open voicing arrangement. This next part, part B, is used only once in this tune, and it's quite busy. So how about a sparse arrangement like crossed hands? Then it's back to part A again to end the tune, maybe with a counter melody setting for a full lush finish. All of that is only a suggestion. Do it any way you like, as long as your arrangement makes a pattern and not a chaos. As I said, this blueprint of AABA is the most common in our standards, but you'll come across tunes with other patterns, and one you're sure to find is the ABAB form. For example, here's the song Laura from the movie of the same name. As usual, the tune is 32 bars long, divided into four equal parts, and starts with part A. But in this type of tune pattern, part A doesn't repeat itself, at least not yet. Instead, part A is followed by a new theme, part B. After that, part A will return for eight bars to be followed by part B again to finish the song. Well, you know how to start creating a setting for this tune pattern. There are four parts to the tune, two A's and two B's you could elect to arrange both A parts one way and both B parts another. Or you could treat each part separately. Okay, you know all the rest, and here's one way to do it. You have a better way of arranging this tune? Good. Do it your own way. That's what this course is all about. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, the clock is a wonderful invention, a great improvement over other ways of telling time. Take the sundial, for instance. Why, the strain on your wrist would be terrible, especially during the rush hour on cloudy days. What if we went back to the hourglass? You could never understand the simple clockwise way chords move in almost all of our music. And what about all the other side benefits of the clock? If people weren't clockwise, life would be a total chaos. Nobody would know when to get up or leave for work, and nothing would get accomplished at all. No, I don't think she's in yet. The cover is still on her typewriter. No, she'll be a little late this morning. Her cat is sick. I see her nail file, so she's somewhere in the building. You just missed her. She's gone to lunch. Still at lunch. No, she's at a bridal shower in accounts receivable. 
sorry, she's at a meeting of the grievance committee. No, it's four o'clock, she's at her therapist. No, she won't be in tomorrow, she's taking a personal day. In today's episode, we're going to take a further look at how harmony moves, that is, how chords change. And as you recall, it's as easy as telling time by a clock. The trick is to look only at the root notes of the chords and the path those root notes follow. It's a path, all right. It sounds like a path and a well-worn path at that. But it doesn't look like a path, at least not the way it's laid out in printed music. That's because there's no room in printed music to show the path of root notes the way it really looks. And the way it really looks is exactly like a plain, ordinary, everyday circle. Or rather, a plain, ordinary, everyday clock. Now, as for how chords move on the circle, well, let's take a few songs and watch their chords move. The first song has to be Red River Valley, of course, because the director hates it. As you'll see, the chord progression begins on a home base chord, and the other chords move away from home base and back to it. In this instance, the home base chord is G. And the other chords of the song move away from it and back to it. makes much better sense on the circle than it does in printed music. Take another example of the same movement, the same kind of chord progression on the circle. This time, the home bass is on F, and as usual, the other chords move away from home bass and back to it. So far, we've been seeing and hearing the most elementary kind of chord progression on the circle. It's an elementary chord progression because the chords don't wander far from home. No farther, in fact, than the neighbor on either side of home base. Now, this is the stuff of most children's songs, folk songs, hymns, patriotic songs, and the like. What keeps the chord progression so close to home base is the magnetic pull of the home base, the way the dinner hour on the clock pulls everybody to the table from wherever they are. As composers discovered over the years, the magnetic attraction of home base is very strong, so strong, in fact, that it can pull quite a long progression of chords toward itself. heard that harmonic movement at least a trillion times. It's the traditional, the standard, the classical chord progression in popular music. And here's how these classical progressions move on the circle. As you would expect, the progression begins on home base, F for example. Then it jumps backward and starts back clockwise, stop by stop, until it's home again as in this classic by Rodgers and Hart. Blue moon, you saw me standing alone Without a dream in my heart Without a love of Now, classical chord progressions don't always cover exactly a quarter of a circle. 
sometimes the jump backward is less than a quarter circle, say from home base back only two stops, as in this waltz by Strauss. And sometimes the chord progression is longer than a quarter of a circle. In fact, it's almost a half circle jump backward, as you can see and hear in this one. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Make his complexion like peaches and cream. Give him two lips like roses and clover. Then tell me that my lonesome nights are over. And sometimes a song uses more than one type of progression. For example, it can combine a classical progression of less than a quarter circle with an elementary progression using the neighbor next door to home base and a classical progression that uses more than a quarter circle. To be very specific about it, take the song New York, New York. It begins on the home base of F, jumps less than a quarter circle backward to G, and then comes home by way of C. Then the chord movement changes. It becomes an elementary classical progression by incorporating the neighbor next door to home base, in this case, B flat. And now it's back to a classical progression, but this time with a backward jump longer than a quarter circle from home base all the way back to A. Well, that's basically how chords move on the circle. There's an elementary progression that never goes farther from home base than the next door neighbors. most common of all in standards, the classical progression with its jump backward and clockwise journey home. Moon, you saw me standing alone. True, you might find attempts here and there to camouflage it, but they don't really fool anybody. For instance, sometimes the progression doesn't start on the home base at all. Instead, it starts out on the homeward path and works its way back home. But as you can see in here, it's still very much a classical progression. There's another way that chords move on the circle, and that's with the use of two home bases. Romantic chord progressions usually work this way. The tune begins with its chords centered around the first home base. A few bars later, the tune repeats, and the chords follow a similar path, but around a different home base. Put them both together and you've got a romantic chord progression. Now, that doesn't mean that the circle is the only path chords follow in popular music. Once in a while in printed music, you might see a progression that doesn't seem to follow the circle. This kind of progression usually makes more sense when you realize it follows the alphabet, the way the notes come along on the keyboard. 